Joe, Frontier Flight 1514 was three hours late leaving San Antonio and then was diverted to Memphis three hours ago because of mechanical issues. And just a short time ago, passengers were told they will not be leaving Memphis until tomorrow morning. They were told you can go to a hotel and maybe get reimbursed when you submit the bill, or you can sleep on an air mattress here at the airport. Tavi Clay was trying to get to D.C. for the Memorial Day weekend. How are you holding up? Um, I'm upset. It doesn't show that Frontier values their customers. Um, we are not important. People want to get home to their families and for them not to have a representative at their desk and their gate to speak with, uh, to speak with us, is it's, it's a shame. It's super disrespectful and it just doesn't support that they truly care about their customers. And you are traveling with Cujo, yes. the sweet little puppy who's been very patient because you've been here now for nearly four hours. Yes, we have been here for four hours. Airport total, probably about 10 hours considering we were in San Antonio for a long time. Not the way they want their holiday travel to go. Corinne Horton, was trying to get to Washington, D.C. for a memorial event to honor her brother David, who died in Iraq two years ago. How are you feeling? I'm heartbroken. Uh, there were a lot of events planned for this weekend. I was invited to march in a Memorial Day parade, holding a picture of my brother to honor his memory. And I, I just really was looking forward to hanging out with the, the different people in the organizations, following the families of fallen soldiers and I'm, I'm just I'm speechless like I'm just like I can't believe this happened and I have no idea what I'm gonna do all right it's hotel or air mattress I also want to point out she too is traveling with a dog that is Schroeder also very patient so again they have two choices stay at a hotel tonight submit the bill maybe get reimbursed by Frontier or an air mattress here at Memphis International reporting live at the airport Joyce Peterson WMC Action News 5 the hallowed grounds of the Memphis National Cemetery, the final resting place for many who served. Over a thousand area scouts place 42,000 American flags on the graves of soldiers. It made me realize that like freedom is amazing that we have, you know. It's like some countries just don't have freedom, period. But we do, and that's because of these people. Cold weather didn't stop those looking for a workout, but it did stop drivers in their tracks. Memphis police officers and police service technicians reported to crashes and stuck vehicles on Saturday. Memphis police say officers responded to more than 300 crashes in the last two days. When you go over this hill, you're going to slide. Maurice Johnson says he has seen dozens of cars spin out on side streets in the Binghampton area. The guy said he'd been waiting on a tow truck three hours and the tow truck never came. Our cameras caught Johnson helping several drivers move their cars off the ice. I got a little salt. I've been using salt. And if the salt don't work, I use my shovel. If the shovel don't work, I get down and I chip the ice. Memphis officials said they will not be deploying the city's plows and scrapers, but the city will be deploying sand and salt trucks on Memphis streets. While main thoroughfares are starting to clear, side streets are still covered in ice. I've been going 10 miles per hour because I don't want to mm -hmm. uh, wreck. We found Claudia Panera stuck on Veteran Plaza Drive, and she has a message for other drivers thinking of getting out on the road. Just stay home, actually. <laughs> Don't go out. In Memphis, Sasha Jones, WMC Action News 5. I hear so many people talk about they're not scared of storms. They've not been close enough. Fighting back tears, Gary Gardner told me how he and eight other members of his family ran for cover from Saturday's storm in Kaiser, Arkansas. The relatives hurried to the family's safe room. The whole, the whole contents is boxed with concrete poured in it. The laundry room with no windows is surrounded by cinder blocks with rebar bracing and a storm door. Gardner says he put it in when the house was built in 2000 to protect against tornadoes. It was like a real hard blow, like something hit the house and then it was like a real hard suck and the air just felt like I've never felt the air before. By Sunday morning, volunteers were already out helping residents clean up the First Baptist Church leading the charge. Stick together and uh, help your neighbor. Really is incredible to see the number of people coming out and helping here in Kaiser. Even from where I'm standing, I can see about two dozen people just trying to help clean up, get limbs picked up, and help everyone get things back to normal as best they can. My granddaughter's school teacher is here. Um, just everybody. 
you know, it don't surprise me at all. Volunteers pitched in to help cut down a large tree the storm slice in Cheryl Martin's yard. I'm just hoping that we haven't had a lift and, and really messed up the roof. Meanwhile, Gary Gardner says he'll have to check out his home for structural damage. All things that can be fixed in time, as Kaiser counts its blessings. Thank goodness no one was hurt in all this, and our town wasn't destroyed, but we took a pretty hard lick. In Mississippi County, Arkansas, Kendall Downing, WMC Action News 5. A small crowd of people stayed around the statue of Confederate Colonel William Rogers all day. This man drove 40 miles from Alabama. I want preservation of history. Um, all good and all bad of history. The statue outside the Alcorn County Courthouse was one of 11 Confederate monuments the online hacker group Anonymous threatened to remove at 5 p.m. Friday. We were taking that threat seriously. Police and sheriff's deputies stood guard, putting a barrier around the statue. We're going to protect our property um, that these city and county people paid for. Uh, we're not going to let outsiders come in here and destroy our community. Citizens stood alongside law enforcement, not inspired by hate, they say, but inspired to protect what they believe is history that deserves to be publicly displayed. If someone just tries to come down and take it down, do you think there will be violence, though? Will you defend it? Yes. If somebody tries to take it down, we will defend it. Hopefully not violently. We don't want to be violent. As for those who say this monument to a Confederate is offensive... Well, don't look. They've been here for over a hundred years now.